Adam Hamlin. I'm the editor of Web Pixel, and I'm joined by regular contributor Alex Mustard. Hi, Alex. Hey, Adam. Good to see you. So, uh, hi. Good to see you. Have you been diving recently? Um, no, not 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 in the last couple of weeks. But I'm hoping to go tomorrow. Really mm. looking forward to taking some pictures again, mm. um, trying out some of the new gear that's been arriving here. So yeah, hopefully yeah, yeah. in the water tomorrow. I know you're always diving. Have you been in 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 this week? No, I've I've been to the opticians. All oh, right. Well, um, hopefully they've sorted you out. Uh, I think you need some help from having <laughs> seen your pics. <laughs> Only joking, of course. Thank you very, very much. very positive today about photography. Yeah, we're, we're positive about pictures today. Um, so um, we're in the kind of privileged position where uh, we have the winners of the underwater category of the Wildlife Photography of the Year competition um, have been supplied to us before the announcement. Um, obviously, this video will be going out after the announcement. We can't we can't mm -hmm. give it out beforehand. Um, Just to interrupt you, I'm not sure all of these are from the underwater category. They're the underwater pictures that sorry, are winners yes. within the yeah, wildlife. Yeah, community. my apologies. Yeah, I, I, so so like they're, they're the images from underwater. Obviously, they're relevant to our, to, to our community. Um, yeah, mm. thank you, Alex, for that correction. No, I think okay. it's really important because I'm sorry to derail you already. But actually, the underwater category is one of the smaller categories in the competition. Yeah. And actually having success with an underwater picture outside that category is often a harder Thing to achieve than within that category so yeah. it's um so those that have had success outside that category i know we haven't got that information yet we've just got the pictures yeah so yes yeah, so, so we have the pictures um and um you know the, i think we're going to run through them together have a chat about them obviously with the aim of releasing this video fairly soon after the, the results are announced um I think just to start off with, really, I, I, I mean, I, I think, as is always the case, it's a very prestigious competition. You know, winning or placing this competition has got to be a, a pinnacle of achievement for any underwater, any photographer or underwater photographer. Mm -hmm. um, and, and, you know, huge congratulations to all those amongst the placings. I think, uh, you know, obviously the the the, the images um, represent a, represent certainly a, a, a significant achievement for all of them. So 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 well done, congratulations. Um, I know many of you personally. So so please. Uh, Please accept my congratulations for for, for your images. Um, no, and I, I definitely second that because you know from my own experience of having success in this competition, it is something to savor every time the 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 luck comes your way. Because you know, I mean, I say luck not out of false modesty, and I'm obviously not a winner this year. Although I did enter, so I'm keen to point out, you know, that I always try and enter this competition. So if you don't see my name winning, it's because I haven't won, um, even though I was in it. But um, it is something to enjoy when it comes around because there are so many good photographers entering with so many pictures that when the cards fall your way, when the judges choose your style, your to your types of pictures to win that particular year, you definitely have to enjoy it because you never know when it's going to come around again. Yeah. And so, and it, and it 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 is career changing. It is even life changing. You know the competition, and that's you know one of the reasons why I think it's such a an amazing event to be part of. Yeah, it's very special, isn't it? So yeah, I, I yeah. do feel sorry for them this year. I was just digging these out earlier because normally at this time of year you get one of these coming if you're lucky enough coming through your letterbox, and these are the invites to the the various oh, award ceremonies from down the year. And I, I've been fortunate enough to be invited along, you know, obviously as a, as a winner, also when I've judged the competition yeah. as a judge, and actually I've also been invited to the award ceremony just for being a good guy. So I'm very proud to that. I very regularly get to to trot down to the the natural history museum at this time of year and they do an amazing gala dinner um in the main hall of the of the natural history museum if anyone has been in there they turn the stairs at the far end of the the hall which um we've got charles darwin's statue on now um into a stage and yeah. they they call the winners of the categories up to speak and it is a phenomenal evening yeah. and i do feel sorry for any of the guys that have won this year, either won big this year or been placed for the first time this year, who won't go to that. And I know later this evening or after this video, it's earlier this evening from when this video comes yes, out, indeed, yeah. that there will have been a fantastic online ceremony. Yeah. And I know that the Duchess of Cambridge is, um, is, is presenting the overall winner's award. Yeah. Um, and that that will be fantastic. And she's a, it's a great representative to do that. Not only is she a very loyal supporter of the Natural History Museum, she's a keen photographer herself. And actually, yeah. when I was speaking to her about one of my winning pictures in, in the past, she was very keen to tell me about all her night diving experiences. Yeah, yeah. So my, my picture from a wet pixel workshop, by the way, Adam, you'll be pleased there to you know go. that. Oh, right. But but no, she was really, you know, she'd been night diving. You know, she's someone who's got a real passion for this whole subject. Yep. So a very good person to be presenting. Great, the great, great ambassador, not only for, 
for mm. for um for that history museum but also for for the event as well yeah uh, so so we thought alex and i thought we might sort of have a bit of a run through the images try and introduce them to you um give us give us give you some thoughts about um some of the images um mm. I, I guess probably one of us needs to lead the way alex do you, do you want to do you want to start off? Do you want to pick one at random or do you, or how well, do you want to do this? Um, I've got them in a folder on my computer in alphabetical order. There we go. OK. Um, I don't know all the results. I think I do know which one was the category winner. Yeah. Um, but I, yeah, so they may, some of them may be from other categories, as we said. Yeah. Um, so the first one is um, Domenico Trip, Tripodi's um, photo of a jellyfish. And this is a um, Pelagia noctiluca jellyfish, a mo stinger, I think they're called, yeah. in um, salp chains. Yeah. And you know, it, it's it's obviously it's a it's a wide angle image in the middle of a dense plankton slick. Yeah. And I think it's the texture, particularly created by those salps yeah. um, and the jellyfish, that you know I, I think just creates a an otherworldly feeling. And I think that's something that one thing you have to always remember with the wildlife photography of the year competition is they often don't have any specialist underwater judges. Yep. And even when they do, that person is only one voice amongst many. Uh, yep. And you have to remember that this is judged by people who are not used to seeing underwater pictures, don't know what's common or rare, often have paid no attention to what's been awarded in previous years yep. um, because it's not, you know, they, they watch all the other categories but don't watch our category. Yep. And so, you know, they can choose stuff that everyone's like, well, that's very common or that's unusual. And, and you know, and they don't really have a feel for that. Yep. Um, I think this picture is, um, is, is very beautiful and very dramatic. Personally, I, I, I've seen more interesting compositions. I love the feel of it. Yeah. But I think the, the jellyfish with its tentacles pulled in in the middle of the picture is not as beautifully positioned as it, as it could be. Yeah. But I love the feeling of the background of all the salp chains. I think I it's think beautifully lit, actually. I think I think there's, yeah. there's, yeah, he's used a real control of the lighting in that, you know, yeah. the salp chains, it's very easy for them to, to overwhelm the, the jellyfish because they're all pretty translucent subjects. Um, mm. and, and by using quite, well, obviously he's lit it very carefully. Um, and, and yeah. has achieved the, the impact. You know, it would be very easy just to just to light everything up and lose it, lose the jellyfish into the background. Um, yeah, and, and I presume it's Domenico's first win in the competition. And I think that's, you know, by far, you know, your first yeah. time you never forget. And I hope that he, he really, really enjoys it. And I, I do feel really sorry for him that he won't get to go to, to that award ceremony. But hopefully the online ceremony We'll make up for that in some small way. What, what I'd like to move on to the next one. We've got quite a few to get through. Right, I was going to ask, what time of day do you think that's shot at? Is that shot in in the dark, or do you think that's just drop off from the strobes? I th no, I think that's just fast shutter speed. Okay. Maybe late afternoon, early yeah. morning, because the sun is, you know, perhaps on the other side of Snell's window. But yeah, I think, yeah. or but I think, don't think it's a night shot. Yeah. yeah. Um, next up is is Laurent Ballester's um, photo of the sh um, the Triton shells with a, a reef shark behind. And this was released as a preview image a few weeks ago. Yep. So we, we've seen this one around. I am, you probably would struggle to find a bigger fan of Laurent Ballester's photography than mine. Um, for me, this is not a picture I would put, you know, anywhere near his best hundred pictures. Yep. Um, but, you know, that's the way the judging goes in these competitions sometimes. Yep. You know, you as a photographer, you enter your shots, you don't know what they're going to choose. Yep. Um, it's, it's, a, it's, a, it's a nice image, but I don't find it particularly full of interesting message or indeed beauty but you know i wasn't judging it's it's not what i do think is interesting about it i do think there's a lovely reflection in the image yeah and one thing that you do see a lot in the wildlife photography of the air is the land photographers who judge the competition they don't like fish eyes and we underwater photographers we shoot with fish eye a lot if you look back through the history of the wildlife photography you'll see so many of the wide angle pictures that are awarded in this contest a shot with rectilinear wide angle lenses yeah. rather than fisheye. Yeah. And I think there just a lot of land photographers find the fisheye distortion, which we hardly notice as underwater photographers. Yeah. They they find it very offensive. Yeah. And so often this rectilinear feel is much more pleasing to them. Yeah. I, I do think this is a, a species, the the the, the triton shells, which you know do suffer. There's quite a nice environmental story. And perhaps this is in an environmental category something to do with them coming back onto the reef. They're an important predator of crown of thorn starfish. Yep. They've been decimated because they're such beautiful shells in many parts of the world. And maybe that's that there's an interesting conservation story in this picture, which attracted the judge's attention. Mm. Um, I like the nighttime and I like the lighting very much. 
I think it's probably quite a difficult shot to get, um, mm. or, or difficult or lucky, uh, one of the two. Um, because I think well, actually, no one could ever fault how much effort Lauren puts no, into his. No, absolutely, pick. yeah, yeah. And and I think you know I think the the lighting because obviously I think managing to capture the the light onto the shark again um, mm. at that moment it quite quite a tough act to pull off. Um, mm. I think for me again, I, what what sort I think of, in French Polynesia though those sharks come round quite regularly. <laughs> <laughs> but the the I think the, the I presume shadow, that's right. I think the shadow on on particularly the trite in the foreground for me is a bit is a bit distracting, um, and it, it creates quite a quite a dark image for me. But anyway. Yeah, I, I mean you know I, I'm I don't want to I mean criticise the pictures today. So right. let's move on to the next one. Yeah, yeah. Suffice yeah. to say, the next one that comes up in my alphabetical list is also by Laurent. Yeah. And this one is for me, you know, classic wildlife photography. I, I love this picture. Yeah. It's a picture that's got real staying power for me. Yeah. So it's it's a group of surgeon fish spawning at dusk. The white clouds in the water are their gamete clouds mm. spawning, and the sharks, the grey reef sharks, are coming in and trying to hunt them while they're spawning. And just for good measure, Laurent's got beautiful sun rays, mm. a pack of sharks in the picture, yep. um, and you know all this, all this whole energy. So it's classic nature photography. Too, yeah. um, I, I really can't think anything really to. I, I think what I love about this image is it's one that you can explore again and again. It's a complicated canvas yep. that just draws you in and tells a really interesting natural history, classic wildlife photography story, yep. um, with beautiful light, beautiful action. Yep. Uh, and 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 there's so much to explore with your eyes in the picture. Every, I think it, every time I look at it, I see something different. It's, um, it's yeah. definitely. Um, I mean, obviously we've only had these for a short period of time, but but mm. um, but I mean, certainly the 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 visual impact of it is um, and, and it is very captivating. Mm. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I think yeah, for me, a, you know, real favourite amongst these that that are in. I think Rina really, really, really spectacular shot. Te technically, again, he's done a really good job of of both both um framing and capturing the scene you know there's a lot of action going on there there's some there's some fairly fast moving animals he's got challenging light conditions obviously because of the the sunset um or so, I presume it's sunset um you know yeah definitely. and he, he he's 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 managed to get in there and, you know everything's sharp um so there's no there's no motion blur so you know he's managed to 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 a really good job of capturing this uh, you know in, in what must have been quite difficult conditions yeah yeah, no, I really like that that shot. Yeah. Okay. Um. Next up is Sam Sloss with a anemone fish um with a parasite in its mouth. Yeah. I think it's important to illustrate this is from one of the young young photographer categories. Yeah. Um. It's, it's, I think it's great to see young photographers being represented. Last year, the overall winner in the youth categories was an underwater photo. Yeah. And great to see another um, you know, strong underwater picture in the youth category is really important for encouraging more people into diving yep. more people into underwater photography yep. so you know, that's a real win for us as underwater photographers and, and, it and also, that's also a very quality picture and, and, and of a very charismatic species that that mm. that is instantly recognizable now um you know, around the world so mm. um, particularly amongst younger people so so you know I, i'm sure he'll be called nemo by everybody but um, you know, it's it, it, a great ambassador shop for 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 what we do. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, and I think a lot of kids will get really drawn in because you know it's beautiful anemone yeah. with lovely green colour on it. You know, it's a super classic Nemo clownfish, yeah. and then you've got the Chimothid isopod. Just as everyone's getting all caught up in the cutesiness of it, yeah, suddenly yeah. there's this you know the reality of nature side of it. So totally. yeah, real really good picture and you know fantastic by Sam, and also really really great for the. Um, for underwater photography in general to have another youth winning picture in this very high profile competition. Yeah, yeah absolutely. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. All right, now we're going to move into the um, the Song de Kai um, section of, the, <laughs> of, of it. Um, and there were, he has three pictures awarded um, in the competition. All of them are, are black water shots and they all look pretty much like 60 mil lens shots. Yep. So fairly standard black water shots, but all lovely clean images. One of the yeah. things you're not allowed to do in the wildlife photography is, is clean images. And that that can be, um, you know, you can crop them, but you're not allowed to clean backscatter things. And that can be a make make black water shooting particularly challenging to be awarded in yeah. um, because it, 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 a lot of the shots you see them looking amazing on Facebook, but that's because they've been had all the backscatter cleaned up yeah, yeah, it's quite, um, quite a little bit harder in, in these situations. 
generally um, black water involves one, a lot of post processing um, yeah, yeah is we you know I, i've seen i mean i think it was about five years ago we had the first one of these in upy as a as a winner of one of these jacks inside a, a jellyfish as a as a winner that gutsy shot one which we awarded about five years ago yeah. and it is a classic subject but i think this one just the really tiny jellyfish and the 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 jack being almost the same size as the jelly for me makes this a particularly memorable shot mm. and it's just really cute really unbelievable great color yeah. so much character coming out of it you know it's it's I, I know i really just can't fault it as an image mm. you know character cute color eye-catching graphically strong yeah it's simple but it, you know it's a competition shot it just grabs your attention yeah yeah absolutely um next up um is um a pit and, and um a a squid shot i guess it's, it's a diamond squid i'm not sure it's very good on the species of these but a, a panning shot yeah um for me it's it's a very high quality blackwater shot i think my i have no criticism at all over the picture i'm surprised that the the judges of the wildlife photographer have again awarded so many blackwater shots because yeah. you know in the last four years we've had the the category winner of underwater photography has been a blackwater shot yeah. two years ago it was a panning blackwater shot yeah. and i do think that you know the i'm surprised the judges are saying a shot like this i don't blame the photographers for entering them i think yeah. this is a beautiful image a great shot yeah, yeah. But I, I would hope that the judges would be looking back at their own competition and saying how come we're awarding the same stuff again i, I think it's I something think. you mentioned you mentioned earlier alex is that is that you know there does seem to be a bit of disconnect on the judging between you know looking at the historical results um sometimes and this this may be a bit of an example of that but that's not to detract from the image yeah. no and that said this is an absolutely stunning image and yeah. all three of his entries are beautiful blackwater shots and i can't fault them technically right. and they're all very deserving i do think the judges should be trying to balance the collection within the categories you know you would complain if the animal portraits was all lions yeah um and i think within the underwater category sometimes because it's not a favored category there that they, they they go you know and so this is his other shot which i think is the category winner yep. is another um squid shot yeah adam it, yes, and it, it is. Yeah, it is. Yeah. Beautiful, golden, yeah. unbelievably perfectly posed, you know, yeah. fantastic symmetry. Yeah. All the tentacles out, um, or the arms out, the tentacles out, yeah. you know, a really, really beautiful graphic image yes. and super clean as well. And it, the this colors, is a lovely shot. The colors are, are fantastic. You know, it's just and, and all three of those golden. shots are, are superb black yeah. water shots. Um, and my, I think, you know, the, the, the point I was trying to make, I keep getting bogged down in the negative side rather than the positive side, is that I, you know, I think the judges should be looking at the category and not awarding three images that are all of the same style of photography and three images that are very similar to, you know, you know, to the previous category winners from this category of, you know, three out of the last four years. I think um, what, yeah. we do, what we do have to say, something Alex mentioned earlier, you know, that, that to capture a black water image like this with minimal post-process, particularly backscatter removal, is a really cleverly mm. shot picture. Um, all three, actually, to be fair, mm. because because the majority of black water images are heavily processed and have to be, mm. sort of by definition, um, and, and the rules of the competition actually pretty much exclude that. So, so mm. you know, Wowie's well, done a really, really good job with the way he's captured these images. Um, yeah, absolutely. And and I would also say that, um, you know, Song, Song Dukai has really underlined his state status as the maestro of this type of photography, not yeah. only winning the category, but yeah. having the success this year and last year. I think you've got a photo of him, haven't you, with me last year at the awards. I did. Yeah. yeah. Uh, he won't be able to um, enjoy um, um, being there and having 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 a good drink and having a good good fun at the awards this year, sadly. And I have to say the whole event is incredible every year. But I think he's really underlined his state just as the absolute maestro of yep. this branch of photography. So it certainly is the one to beat when it comes to Blackwater. There you go. Now, and I, I would say, you know, despite my criticism of the continuous um, awarding of this type of picture, I do think these pictures are better than the Blackwater shots of, of a few years ago. Yep. So I think the standard of, of them is going up. 
I, I also think that the, the Blackwater images graphically, by definition, it, they're fundamentally a very, very strong graphical image. Uh, mm. And oftentimes, I think judges look at, 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 at they look at images graphically. We all do this, and we look at something that's really strong graphically. It's very easy to go, "That's amazing," because it's it's and and possibly this is this is why they they're getting selected frequently in in this particular competition. Yeah. Well, I think it's also you have judges who are not seeing underwater pictures very frequently, yep. may not have ever seen a blackwater picture before, probably yep. haven't paid any attention to the previous yep. winners of the underwater category. Yep. Um, because they've been focused on the categories that are more interesting to them. Yep. Um, but nonetheless, there's no doubting that those three images are absolutely stunning. Yep. And of the of the images that we have here, I think the three of them are probably the the most stunning three. You know, there's yeah. no doubt about the quality of the images. I think it's important to, to st stress that. It was just interesting to talk about the thing. And then the final image we have, which is awarded in the underwater, is a macro picture of a pair of, of shrimps by Wee Wee Zeng um, mm. on a on a brain coral, mm. and a really you know extraordinary creature. Mm. I think you know real otherworldly alien like, and that's definitely something that the wildlife photographer of the year judges often go for. You know they're land photographers and they love to see something that just they've never seen the like of before. Just so and sometimes different. you know it it can be something that we underwater photographers know really well. I've I've seen many times in when judging nature competitions with land photographers, then like fall in love with um, common subjects like Coleman shrimps and go, wow, I've never seen anything so colorful and amazing before. And it's, you know, a very standard shot that almost every underwater photographer has who's yep. ever dived in Asia. And, you know, so, um, and that's the nature. And I think when you enter this type of competition, you have to be aware and think these are judges who are not specialists. Yep. You, if you want your pictures only judged by underwater photographers, enter underwater photography competitions. Yep. You, if you choose to enter this competition, you are accepting that your work is going to be judged by a different crowd. Yep. And that can be at times frustrating, but it can also be very illuminating because it gives you a better indication of how maybe the public might react to your pictures yep. as opposed to, to, to your peers. That's and it can really change and influence your style of photography. I think um, one, one of the, the, the again, the, the way this has been shot, I mean, I mean it, it's actually, I, it looks like it's a really simple lighting setup. You know, there's no trickery here. There's no snoots. There's no clever kind of camera yeah. effects. This is basically a very straightforward, nicely shot macro picture. Um, you know, yeah, very flat, good sharp flat, to the flat corners. lighting, really sharpness yeah. in the corners. So, you know, obviously exposed perfectly. Um, you know, yeah, it's it's just a it's just a really solid, nicely shot image. Yeah. yeah, I would have really liked it as a vertical. I think it would rotate very nicely. Yeah. but that's probably just my eye. Yeah, um, yeah, yeah. Um, but yeah, uh, anyway, always fascinating to see these pictures. I'm really excited about seeing the rest of the collection because yep. I do think until you've looked through the whole collection, you yep. don't get a feel for how these fit in. And often when you look at other categories, you go, oh, OK, I see this style of image. You know, you know, I think both Laurel's pictures, the one I love and the one I, I don't like as much, they're both quite complicated shots. Mm. They're quite there's a lot going on in them. There's a lot to explore with your eye, mm. whereas the Blackwater pictures are in your face, immediate, Graphic. grab your attention. And as a category, they do balance each other rather well. Yeah, uh, yeah, yeah. But yeah. yeah, really, really, you know, always fascinating to look at. And it, it's always interesting to wonder which of these pictures will go on and become real icons of the competition going forward, which the public will react to. And I also really enjoy listening out tomorrow as people dissect the results, the comments of the land photographers who I know, because they will always pass comment on the underwater catch going, oh, I absolutely love this picture. And I'm like, really? And they're like, yeah, yeah. and it, it really can change your impression. So, yeah, yeah. you know. My bias is an underwater photographer, and each year I I like to use these results as a chance to try and correct my bias a little bit. Yeah, I think it's a. I think we should all all treat them as a learning experience, you know, and we can all learn from from other people's imagery. And this is a really good opportunity to do that. Absolutely. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. yeah. Um, yeah, yeah. I think the only final thing I'd like to say is just to reaffirm our congratulations to everyone. Absolutely. Yeah. I think that they're a fantastic set of images, um, as always. I think there are images that several of them that can really grow on you. And I think the black waters are, you know, absolutely exemplary of what can be done in that field. Yeah. Yeah. I mm -hmm. agree. And yeah, to, to echo Alex, congratulations. 
Um, yeah. You know, um, thanks to the to the uh, well, I've talked to the year organisers for allowing us access to the images a bit in advance. And obviously, I'm afraid you all won't get to see them until until the results are actually official. But um, but um, it's been been great to make this program. Thanks mm -hmm. to Alex. Yeah, you know, nice. and, you know, I really wanted to do it. There's no point in us sitting here going, "Oh, these are all great." You know, I wanted to sort of, you know, do an honest appraisal of everything. So yeah. uh, it was yeah, fun to do. Yep, yep. I think it, it, it's been uh, it's been great. So um, and of course. Um, the other thing, the other people to thank is, of course, you all for watching. So thank you very much. Um, I hope you enjoyed this. Um, I'm sure these images will provoke discussion. Um, so please feel free to head on over to the Pixel forum or to add comments to below the video. Um, obviously, if you've enjoyed getting a, a preview or, or, a, or an early viewing of, of these images as well, please give us a like. Thank you very much. I look forward to seeing you again soon.